Are you looking to get your pool table moved, but you don't know who to call? Maybe you live out in Timbuktu somewhere, like maybe out in the middle of Alaska or Wyoming or North Dakota, and there's just nobody around to move your pool table for you. So you gotta take matters into your own hands. Well, you're in luck, because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to move your pool table yourself just like a pro would. Stick around. In one of my previous videos, I showed how to disassemble a pool table. And you know what? It goes into a lot more depth than what this video is going to. So if you're interested in a little bit more on how to disassemble your pool table, I'm gonna leave the link up here somewhere. Uh, and if you wanna check that one out, I encourage it. But uh, anyway, all of my videos are really just overviews and guidelines on how to do your pool table service yourself. And you know, just because you don't have the exact same table that I happen to be showing doesn't mean that the same methods don't apply, because they do. Um, the general rule of thumb is you're going to start at the top and work your way down when disassembling a pool table, and you're going to start from the bottom and work your way back up when reassembling. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to move your pool table. I'm going to give you an, a, more, a little more overview on how to disassemble it, how to lift the slates and everything, and how it gets packed in the truck. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're going to start off by, you know, just taking the cover off of the table and folding it up. And, and I got to tell you, being neat and tidy while you're working is essential. Really makes the job go much, much smoother. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to take all of the rail bolts out. And again, this applies to every table that you go to work on. You're going to take the rails off first may not be exactly like this. You may have a few other things in the way. Maybe you have to take the skirts off first or the aprons underneath the uh, rails. But again, you're going to work in that general configuration of your, you're going to work from the top down. Rails come off first. Whatever else is attached to the rails, like the pockets, those are going to get disassembled as well. If you notice in the video here, David's going underneath while I'm taking off the rail bolts. David is going underneath and he's detaching the pockets from underneath the table. And it doesn't really take that long. So once we've got all of the pockets and everything loose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the rail back a little bit and I'm gonna reach underneath by the side pockets and I'm gonna feel and check and see if there are bolts, if both bolts are in. If one of them is missing, that's good because we're gonna lift the rails up in two separate halves. Now again, we're going to take and we're going to throw, we just take and throw all of our hardware together in one Ziploc bag. Feel free to put them in separate Ziploc bags if you have a, think you might have a hard time uh, sorting the bolts and nuts and screws and everything. Feel free to put them in separate uh, Ziploc bags, but we just throw them all together. Now we're going to lift the rails up in two separate halves. So we lift up one half here and we flip it over. And then we'll go over to the other side of the table and we're going to lift up those rails and flip those over. And now we're going to go in and we're going to finish up detaching the pockets from the rails. If there's additional staples or anything like that that are holding little uh, tabs of leather down, you're just going to pop those staples out. Again, anything that needs to come to get detached from you know one piece from the other, that's what you need to go ahead and do. So 
So I typically take care of one side and David will take care of the other. As soon as I'm finished up with uh, getting the bolts out of my side, David's gonna take the drill from me and go ahead and start uh, doing his side. And again, we're gonna try to keep all of the parts together like the pockets. We're gonna keep all of the pockets together. There's only six of them, so it's not too hard to keep track of all of them. Now, once all of the pockets are disassembled off of the rails, just go ahead and start putting your rails off to the side and getting them off of the top of the table. It's at this point that I usually let David take over and I start thinking about things. Now, if you're not planning on replacing the cloth, you would go in exactly like I'm doing here and you're gonna pluck out every single one of the staples that are holding the bed cloth down. And then you come back with a pair of wire cutters like I'm doing here and just remove them, just pull them out. Now, on this particular table, we're gonna replace the cloth. So I just go in and I cut the cloth off. Now I cut all the way around the perimeter and I leave the inside still intact or I just leave it there. That's gonna make for a nice receptacle to take all of the trash and all of the excess cloth and everything. So we're just gonna throw everything into the center of the table. Now one thing to take note of here as to why we're replacing the cloth. If you see here, we have two sets of holes where the rail bolts go. This tells me that this is at, if we, if we were to reuse this cloth, it would be at a minimum the third time this table has been recovered with this cloth. Not exactly the thing you wanna do. So I'll go all the way around the table and in between the pockets, I'm gonna slit the cloth and then rip it. Now, anytime you're moving a table, it's a good opportunity to replace the cloth, but you don't necessarily have to replace the cloth. And as I've said in other videos, anytime anyone is telling you, you must replace the cloth, uh, that's somebody you don't necessarily want to go with. Now, when we pull the cloth off like this, it's gonna inevitably leave staples behind and what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll take every last one of the staples out and clean up any pocket liners, any cloth or anything like that that may have been glued into the, onto the slate right there at the pockets. We're gonna go ahead and clean all that up and then go around the entire perimeter of the table making sure that all of the staples are out. So next, I'm gonna go around the table and I'm gonna start removing all of the screws that hold the slate in. While I'm doing that, this is an opportunity for David to go back in at every one of the pockets where the pockets, the leather pockets were actually attached underneath with staples. David's gonna go around and he's gonna make sure that all of those old staples are pulled out of there as well. Now, once we've got everything done, we go ahead and fold all of our trash together in the center of the table using that old cloth as a receptacle. and just fold it all together and then throw it away. Now again, you see me going around and retrieving all of the screws, all of the slate screws. And I'm just gonna throw them again in the bag along with all of the rest of our parts because, you know, I'm, or all of the rest of our hardware because again, I'm gonna go back in when we go to install the table and I'm gonna sort everything out. Now, I wanted to show you again on this table, this is the kind of craftsmanship that you can expect to find every so often when a pool table installer does not take his time and he doesn't really care about the work that he does. The amount of beeswax that was left on here, that's a good eighth of an inch thick. It's just a glob that's on there. And all of that has to be cleared off and, and cleaned off 
in order to have a nice playing surface later on down the road when we go to, again, reinstall this table. We want everything perfect. Now this is a Golden West table that we're doing and it does not have pinned slate. And if you find that the slates are stuck together, you can ever so slightly lift them, but don't go too high. Otherwise, you if, if it is pinned slate, you will break out the slate at the pins. But once it's been determined that it is not pinned slate, you can lift up to break that seal of the wax, paraffin, paraffin, beeswax, plaster of Paris or Bondo. And here we go, we're gonna load up the slates in the truck and the slates for a local move or even a long distance move, provided you're using a pickup truck, the slates are just gonna get laid down flat, stacked one on top of another in the bed of the pickup. Now we were fortunate with this job that we had French doors to go through. If you didn't have French doors and you just had a standard walkway, tilt everything on its side. It's fine. It'll work just fine. So as you can see, we're putting slate number two directly on top of slate number one. And then we go back in and we grab slate number three and bring it out to the truck. And again, we're gonna stack all three of them, one on top of another. This makes it nice and firm, nice and solid, nothing to worry about, especially with a regular pickup truck. The suspension on a regular pickup truck is soft enough that, you know, you're not gonna really get any hard vibrations unless you hit some really hard bumps, which I would advise, take your time, know your route ahead of time before you go to move it, Make sure you're not going over craters. Make sure that they're, you know, we didn't have a meteor shower the night before. So we lay out a moving blanket on top of the slates and we're gonna put our first three rails on. And then we're gonna fold our moving blanket over the top of those three rails and we're gonna stack our next three rails. If you have to put a finished piece with another finished piece and you don't happen to have a moving blanket, make sure you put finished sides together and unfinished sides together. If you notice just now when I put the rail on top, I put the unfinished side of the rail on top of the other unfinished side of the other two rails. So now that we've got that, we'll turn our attention back to the table itself and we're gonna remove two of the legs. David's gonna pull the legs out from underneath while I hold up the frame. And we lower that end. And then we go over to the opposite end. We're gonna remove the other two legs. Now at this point, your table will flex a little bit and you only wanna lift up on one side so that the other leg doesn't fall. Pro tip there. Now everything is ready. We're gonna lift up the frame and bring it out to the truck. Again, if all you had was a standard doorway, you turn the table on its side and go on out that way. Now take note here, we're gonna flip the frame upside down. And it goes all the way butted up against the cab end of the bed. Lastly, we're gonna bring our rails, or we're gonna bring our legs out, 
And we're gonna put the legs on the either side of the table in the bed of the truck. Put two on one side, two on the other. It's really, really simple. After we've got all of that, we'll go ahead, we'll throw our pockets in there, our hardware, and as you can see, everything fits quite neatly in the bed of the pickup. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty simple job, okay? The transporting of it, like I said, you can do this in a standard pickup truck, I wouldn't advise going out and renting a U-Haul truck or anything like that to move a pool table. And look, don't get your buddies together and get eight of y'all to latch onto the pool table and carry it out. You're going to end up breaking slates or worse yet, breaking someone. We don't want that. Look, if you follow my guide on how to do this and how to reassemble your table and you get stuck to the point where you can't you can't finish it up it's going to cost you less long term if you do have to call up a technician because you didn't screw it up too terribly bad okay i'm here to help you guys um leave me some comments down below and look i'm going to leave amazon links for all of the tools and everything that i use throughout this video and all of my pool table installs Look for it down below. If there's a tool that you need to get you through the job, chances are it's going to be listed in the description down below. Leave me some comments. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And look, hit the bell notification. That way you know every time I upload a new video. I hope you learned something from this. I hope I've helped you. And I do get phone calls from you know, every once in a while from people like you that are watching my video and either want to tell me thanks Look, don't blow up my phone. But uh, if you want to tell me thank you for helping you, leave me a comment down below. It warms my heart to know that I'm helping you guys out. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the next video and y'all take care.